Hi everybody, Michelangelo Badio here. Joey is here! And Robert is angry as ever. This is the first uh, broadcast of 2024. I'd like to say hello to everybody. Uh, I have been busy. Uh, my life has been pretty crazy since uh, the beginning of last year when kind of things opened up. I'm home. I go on the road. I'm home a little bit. Go on the road. Home a little bit. Go on the road. I have only been home a couple days this year, even though it's a new year. January 1st, I was off recording with Manowar. Uh, we are doing two new records this year. It's uh, incredible. And uh, the recording is amazing. Joey DeMaio is brilliant. And, you know, Eric's an, a fantastic singer. Uh, Dave's a great drummer. But we are, this process, the studio alone looks like you're in NASA. I mean, it's so high tech. And we're recording as a band. So it's not like everybody does individual tracks. We are playing rhythm guitar, bass, drums all together. It's really an incredible thing. And, and I'm very happy to be a part of it. Now, um, I also wanted to talk about, you see all these acoustic guitars here? Well, when I was at Sawtooth headquarters in December, uh, they got a huge shipment of acoustic guitars. A lot of them were sold during Christmas, but we have a sale going on 40% off. There is no code. There's nothing. You just get, and now it's specific to the mahogany series. Now, what do I mean by that? Mahogany, what? And uh, you see all these guitars. There's the 12 string there. This is the mahogany jumbo. We have another, the Dreadnought, and then I am playing the Mini Jumbo, and uh, it is a flash sale. They are going to, we've got a huge shipment of guitars, we've got some left, and we're going to uh, open up the inventory for some of the 2024 new electric models as well. Uh, I want to say hello to a few people. There's John, Peter, hello, John. Uh, it's great. I, I love reading your posts. And I answer when I can. Um, Lester, how are you? Uh, Tanya, Alexis, uh, Denny, Brett. Who else is online here? Roxana, uh, Jenny, Bob. Uh, there's, or, I'm sorry, not Bob, Rob. I meant Rob Ross, my best friend. But anyway, hey, Nick, how are you? Greg, uh, Nick is a great guitar player. We've been friends for a long time. I said, hi, Denny, how are you? Uh, Nils, hey. Uh, ooh, I'm glad, Nils, that you're online. Nils is the bass player of the Michelangelo Badio Band, and we're based in Southern California, Los Angeles. Nils is a killer singer. He is a great singer, a great bass player. We can pull off three-piece songs, and, and it's very difficult to do when you've got a three-piece band because all the elements are super important. If you think of the, the big bands from the, the 60s, Jimi Hendrix, Experience, Cream, um, they had the, the, the same elements. You have a drummer that can just play hard and, and hit good. You need one of the other two to be able to be a killer singer. Nils is that singer. And then the bass has to be really full. That's super important because, and I and uh, we've got that, and Nils is great. Plus, he's got hair down to his waist, so he's got the look as well. Um, we're releasing our version of Man in the Box pretty soon. You've got to hear this. It is incredible. It sounds fantastic. And uh, we've got a lot, a lot of other songs in the works. So, uh, hey, Nils, how are you? Let's see, Nabrak, uh, Lester. Uh, there's just uh, a lot of people here online. Now, getting back to the sawtooth acoustics. I love this mini jumbo. This is the ultimate shred acoustic. And I mean, again, I, you know, I talk about this a lot. I have played a lot of acoustic guitars in my life and doing thousands of guitar clinics over the years, over the years, not tens, not hundreds, thousands, 61 countries, I have toured so much over the years. I mean, I figured it's somewhere between five and, th and 6,000 shows that I've done in my life. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that uh, because many of the years, you know, even when I was younger, we played two or three times a week. 
uh, you know, every week. And then when I started going on the road with Nitro, and even before that, the band Holland, we just played and played and played and played. And then clinics, I was doing, you know, 20, 25 clinics a month for years and all over the planet. But what this means is that I was able to play pretty much every boutique amp, every different kind of, uh, you know, guitar and every brand. I've seen so many things. But one of the things that I can uh, unequivocally say about Sawtooth is that for the money, this is the best acoustic guitar I've ever played. And I'm talking about the entire line. And, and I, again, I look at certain criteria, one low end. got a great sound and I'm playing a mini jumbo. It just sounds great. It's got low end, it has intonation, and it has great parts. Uh, top of the line Fishman preamp system, but it also sounds great unamplified. And uh, you know, when we did the freight train video, you've got to check this out. It's an, the acoustic freight train. I mean, we were playing it at 200 BPM. Now I know a lot of people say, "Oh man, I can play 800 BPM." You try playing 16th notes at 200 BPM. Go. And just keep ripping. Uh, this guitar was perfect for it. And then when I did the background rhythm guitar I used a different instrument but one of the other things that I look for too it's got to have intonation you have no idea how many acoustic guitars I have played in my life this bridge is glued these bridges are glued onto these guitars on acoustic if you are even a sixteenth of an inch the smallest uh, you know uh, point off you're gonna be out of tune. And so that's another thing too, it's quality control. And that's where Sawtooth is great at this. Great. Let's see, you get so much lead back playing unplugged. I don't know about that. I think you get more feedback. Well, yeah, okay, I, I know what you're saying. Uh, a lot of what, what uh, Sawtooth has is another company called Chromacast, where you can put this little, uh, it's like a rubber uh, thing that goes in the sound hole to reduce the feedback. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. And uh, someone, uh, hello, Kathy, too. Kathy is a... Uh, uh, a great journalist, and we did an interview uh, when I was on tour with Manowar. Uh, it was fantastic, and the show was really great. Hi, right, Kathy. How are you? Uh, who else, Brian? Uh, yeah, you're right. You get feedback from playing unplugged. There's no question when you put up a mic, but not all the time. It depends on how your stage setup is, but usually the top pros have figured that one out. Uh, so. Uh, somebody asked if I need a break from playing electric. No, never. Uh, I'm going to make sure this is perfectly in, which it is. Okay. Uh, I never need a break from electric. The only, but I, I have to admit, sometimes, for example, I just finished a solo last night. My schedule is insane, and I love it that way. You know, I have a saying, I only want to work with people who are busy. And the reason for it is that there's a reason they're busy. And when... I play guitar and, and I do these solos. For example, Man in the Box. The solo section is really important. There's not even a solo section. There's no solo section in the Alice in Chains version. But I want to do it. I, I, me, me, Joey, Joey. Yes. And so I wanted to do this killer solo. And there's a lot of dynamics. It, it starts with a really clean sound. 
and I used one of my hybrid guitars, the Sawtooth Hybrids, which is a sound that only that guitar can make. Partially humbucker, partially single coil. It sounds so killer and clean and smooth. And then I break into electric, then back to uh, that really clean sound. And so I worked on that till about almost one in the morning last night. And then I'm, I'm leaving for St. Louis tomorrow morning. So we're, we're doing a video shoot. And I'm not trying to brag about how cool I am. I just love to work. I'm never sick of, of electric guitar. I'm never sick of acoustic guitar. What I do occasionally is just take a break for a day. Clear my head because everything I do, I hear music. You guys might think I'm insane. When I'm on an elliptical at the gym and it's going, I hear... I hear words. I hear rhythms. I always hear musical ideas in my head. I cannot turn it off. Um, I'll be in the car and I'll go. In fact, the song, uh, the bad line. I heard it. I was just sitting in my car to stop like do 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 ba do ba do ba do So I recorded myself tapping on on my car winch not windshield, but it was on the steering wheel. I was going boom you know. And so I was doing all this, and that's when I came up with the riff. So I'm always hearing musical things, always. My brain is filled with it. So sometimes I like to turn it off. Turning it off by watching a movie uh, and just taking a break every once in a while. Um, so, yeah, I just read down. Somebody said about Miles Davis. Uh, I think it's true. You know, when you're a musical person, uh, you know, I hear rhythms. I hear melodies and everything. Every single thing. But I have to say, I do. Uh, Zach Wilde, Voodoo Child, did he play Voodoo Child? I like. Yeah, I love Voodoo Chuck. Uh, I don't really work on my wah chops that much. Somebody asked that question, and I'll tell you why. There's, I'm really good at a wah, and I have a vintage crybaby here. I even have the Morley one with the, uh, with the optical sensor that you don't need to turn it on. There's kind of two different theories to it. You can do it in beat and wow, 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 like... Okay, so there's that way. You can play them in time. I can just go the wow, 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 which is pretty cool. It sounds really good. But Or you can just be nuanced like wow. You know, it's funny. In the original Speed Kills, I had a, uh, I used an original whammy pedal with an optical sensor. It is the best whammy pedal that has ever been made. It was a prototype because I was with Digitech at the time. And so when I played Speed Kills, you hear, whoa, I had a wang bar sound. It sounded exactly like a wang bar. And people said, oh, he cheated, man. How do you cheat? It was 1991. I mean, you know, it was analog, you know, linear editing video. And, uh, but it sounded so killer. So if you watch the original Speed Kills and it goes, whoa, whoa. It's the whammy pedal, and I still have that pedal. It's, it is classic. I only keep it in the studio. It sounds freaking amazing. Oh, Terry Kath. I said the F. Thank you. 
Somebody asked me what my opinion of Steve Vai is. I think Steve Vai, I've thought about him a lot because I, I've said this, and it's kind of funny. I know Steve Vai. We're not super close friends, but we're on a first name basis. He doesn't like to give me like really killer compliments. You know, there's always this thing, well, you know, like I did the Michael's double guitar and I didn't mean to take the wind out of his sails. Well, he did. He did mean to take the wind out of my sails. Why would he have done it? And, and uh, or like, you know, I'm a freak on guitar. And 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 I love it. I, I, I totally respect him. I have all his albums. Here's the thing that I've learned from Steve Vai a lot. I've learned a lot from him over the years because it's a very competitive nature. We both came up in the 80s and I understand the competitiveness. And he told me that, you know, the, and I think he said it in interviews that, you know, something's always cooking in his head. I mean, think about what he does. You know, he'll go on his own tours. Then, then he goes with the original G3. Then he'll do something with just him and Joe Satriani. He's always manufacturing things. And that's what I've done my entire career as well. You know, you have to manufacture. You have to say, okay, I'm going to do an album. Okay, now I'm going to do a tour. Okay, now I'm going to do a video. There's no real roadmap to this. You have to create your own path. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand about what a career is like in music. Whether you're Taylor Swift, Miley Cyrus, or, you know, uh, Radiohead, or Pink Floyd, or Steve Vai. The thing that I love the most about Steve Vai is he's the greatest Steve Vai he can be. And so, you know, whether he gives me a compliment or not, I strive to be the best Michelangelo Badio I can be. Um, look at the latest Shred collab from Jared Dines, which I'm a part of. There's no, I'm decades older than the oldest guitarist on there. I am the oldest guitarist on there, but I haven't lost my skill. And, and I, I still am super fast. I can still play very accurately, I, but my soul is that of a person who's lived, who's lived a long time and who, who just has feelings that are different. And so the thing that I, I appreciate everybody, uh, I appreciate anybody who's successful and I'm not a judge and I'm not a jury. And so, you know, I don't, you don't see, I don't online, I don't criticize other players or mm -hmm. that, but Steve Vai has been kind of a little bit of enigma, a, an enigma for me because, you know, um, all the things I've done and accomplished and, and things that, that he's done, for example, the hard guitars are direct uh, in relation to my double. And he was very reluctant to give me credit. I have the magazine where he said it. He didn't want to take the wind out of my sails. And I met him before he released that video, right before when he was with David Lee Roth. I was with Guy Man Dude, and who, was, who knew Steve. And he didn't say anything about that. But he knew I had a double. But he didn't mention that he had one. And it's not like it's a bad thing. I understand, you know, everybody is competitive. Everybody feels that they want their thing to be more popular or more successful than maybe somebody else. But I learned something very important. This is why I love him so much. His albums are great. His live performance is great. And he's the best Steve Vai he can be. And if you ever take anything from what I've said, that's all a person has to do is best be the best them that they can be. You don't have to worry. You're not in competition with someone else. You're in competition with yourself. And I've known that my whole life. And Steve corroborated that with me because we're really friendly. But And there was a respect level. And I truly love his guitar playing and truly respect the guy. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice one day if he just said, God, Mike, I think you're great. And that's it, you know. And, and uh, But, you know, if I never hear it, it doesn't matter. It's not changing my life any. And, uh, but uh, let's see. Yeah, and uh, Steve, I once said, I don't feel like I'm the best guitar player in the room. Then I shouldn't. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's a good. That's a good thing. But but I do think Steve Vai is the best Steve Vai in the room, and that's the key. And I I truly believe that. Uh, you know, like all these young guitar players that came out. Just look at the Jared Dine Shred Collab Six. There are a lot of great, everybody's great. Everybody's doing their own thing. And everybody, you know, I do my own thing. 
and I do it to the best of my ability, and it's still I'm still at the top of my game. And I work very hard at it. You know, I practice today. I've, I've delivered songs. You know, we're working with Manowar. Okay, somebody wrote, why might I have more trouble with ascending two note per string patterns if I start on downstrokes? Now that is a red hot rocket ride. What I found out is certain things. Okay, somebody wrote those tattoos need touch up. Okay, Jeremy, let me tell you. Oh, no, no, it's a manual. Let me tell you something about this. You are looking at lighting, and my I have not put moisturizer on my arms. I am a vampire. I don't go out in the sun. If you actually saw these close up and I put moisture on, I, moisturizer on it, you wouldn't think that. So don't ever think that, you know, when, when, you, when people write this stuff, you know, a lot of times you just don't know. Now, maybe it looks like that here. If I put moisturizer right now that I've got upstairs, this is my studio, they would look brand new because I take very good care of myself. But I don't care, you know, we're here to, I'm here to teach you a lesson, not to show off my tap. Okay, but anyway, thank you for writing, I appreciate that. Um, okay, let's see, being using your speed kills lessons apply for bass. I think it's great. Um, one of the things too, speaking of speed kills, uh, Doug Marks and I have been very close. To, uh, the, Doug has taught more people on guitar pretty much than anybody on planet Earth. I used to say more people than a person called Mel Bay, Doug surpassed this. I mean, so many people have studied from Metal Method. I've got to say he's number one on this one. And I know Speed Kills is, you know, I'm very grateful for Speed Kills. It's kind of like I have my own Pulp Fiction. I have the, I have the video that just keeps on going and going and going because it's become more than this. But one of the things that that with Doug, we just talked today, uh, there's a special on Speed Kills. So there's 25% off the Speed Kills bundle. Uh, Adam, can you put up the screen? Learn to shred.com. You can go to metalmethod.com, but I have my own URL. Yes, 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 yes. You gotta learn to shred and learn to shred. And so what I do was, uh, all my programs are there, but the Speed Kills bundle is 25% uh, off. And uh, Doug is just great. You know, we had a long conversation today. And, you know, we're, we're like motivational speakers to ourselves. And, you know, it's something interesting because this is what I can say about my programs and about Doug's. One of the things that we've always done since day one is do the highest production of videos. So you can look back now. Things change. I mean, fidelity of an iPhone is so, or, or an Android, is so much better than the highest camera in the early 1990s. But when we did Speed Kills, it was a two plus two, it's metal four minus one, a three camera shoot. And so, and it was done with the highest quality cameras we could do. And that's why, and the lesson, I, you know, I saw somebody recently, I follow all the young guitar players. So, you know, I know about Polyphia, you know, I know all the, you know, Alice, you know, uh, that, that played on the uh, last Shred collab, uh, you know, uh, all these, you know, they're all the great guitar players. And so I watch many of them, you know, all the people that Rick Beato has on his show, even Pat Metheny, even though he's been around a long time, but I watch a lot of young guitar players. And I saw somebody teaching guitar, and he was all upset because people are taking his stuff. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something. I see this every day of my life. I see somebody talking about concepts that I have talked about in the past. Now, did I make up everything? No. But this is why Speed Kills will be relevant. Uh, you know, there's relevance to this two decades from now, it was right the first time I taught it. You cannot, the violin has not changed in the last hundred years. People, Paganini is still as great today as he was in the 1700s. Somebody said that, 
you know, oh, well, you know, if you don't have a song that lasts at least 30, 40 years and you've done nothing, I have no boundaries. I've written the music. Man of War has so many great songs. So when people say, oh, it's a mindless shredder, dude, I defy them. I, I just, one of my songs, no boundaries. How about another one of my songs, Gotta Run? Now, granted, I didn't write it alone. I wrote it with the singer, Freight Train. These songs are 30 years old, and, and they're still in movies. They're still relevant songs. And so this whole thing about, oh, people play fast, they can't write music, it's stupid. It's, a, it's stupid. It, it sounds like it's cheap. It's like, okay, here's a few words that, okay, a shredder, okay, what does a shredder do? Well, they play fast, but they can't write. They just repeat this stuff. They don't know what Paul Gilbert can't write. Are you guys serious? You know, I mean, John Fives and Motley Crue, what, Ingve can't write a song? Are you guys crazy? Not you, not anybody uh, specifically. But the point is this, it's wrong. It's always been wrong. You know, they criticize Mozart, uh, you know, for being too fast. That, the movie Amadeus was not... 100% like uh, uh, accurate, but some of the things were where he was criticized, just like every other great composer is criticized when they play. You know, Rachmaninoff, his music was so difficult to play. And, and you know, oh yeah, he's just a virtuoso, meaning all he did is play fast. It's stupid. And, and so, you know, I've known this since day one and, it, and I'm still here. But what I can say this about speed kills, and when I talk, like even sawtooth guitars, uh, when, I, when I talk about this, it comes from experience. And Speed Kills, the exercises that I did there and on my mental method programs are copied every day. Why? Because they worked the first time and in 50 years from now, unless we go through a huge evolutionary change, the fingers are gonna be like this. Do you see my index finger? It is shorter than my ring finger. There's another type of human that their ring finger is shorter than their index finger. And so now there's a, it's just like picking. There's a couple schools of thought. So when a person comes to me or, or says, oh, I, I can't play, my hand's too small. The first thing I look at is their fingers. And a lot of times when a person might not be tall, this way they've got a really long index finger. What does that mean? it means they can stretch farther. And so, you know, this idea that, oh, I have small hands, I have this. What do your fingers look like? And even when I have fingers like this, I have a big hand, I'm lucky, but I can still, I can still stretch. Um, and you don't have to be the widest. I mean, you've seen a lot of pictures of me over the years like this. Well, I really hit it because I can do it, but I worked at it. But if my index finger was longer than my ring finger, I would have the reach of God. Nobody could touch it. And so, but I don't. So what? You know, what am I going to complain? Oh, my hand. No, no. Joey doesn't complain because he's a narcissist. He doesn't care. I don't care. I'm going to shred. And so that's what it is. You just find out what you have and work with it. But Speed Kills works. It works because it was right. Because I did the research and I gave it to you and I helped, I tried to help you. Doug Marks' programs, his basic course is the best basic course on planet Earth. And all you're gonna do when you see other people do it, and look at, I don't discount anybody who's teaching guitar. I think it's the most noble thing you can do to pass on information. And I passed my information on freely. Somebody asked me today, dude, is like the do your son? I don't even know who the do is other than he's the do. Um, and he's great. I did not know he bought, he bought a sawtooth double guitar to play. I don't know who he is. Um, he, he bought my guitar. And, and he played it great. And, and uh, you know, it's a, uh, I'm really happy for him. But the point is this, he's, he's not, you know, um, he's, he's another great guitar player. Uh, you know, he's big on the internet. And to play that double, I wanted to do things were di that were different. I wanted to do things that were new. And I genuinely wanted to help people. And, uh, you know, so it goes back, you know, to when I see other guitar players, you know, and, and, you know, getting back to Steve Vai, he has been a big influence on me, not technically, 
not not technically, not his writing, although I think they're both brilliant, about his way he goes about being the best Steve Vai. If you, if you ever think about that, look at what he does. He markets Steve Vai better. He's the best Steve Vai he can be. And that's inspiration for me to be the best Michelangelo Badio that I can be. And so, anyway... Um, yeah, the triads and three actors. And uh, hey, Renee, how are you? But anyway, I want to say uh, this too. We have 40% off of the mahogany acoustics. And uh, these guitars, I am just saying, you know, I've been watching a lot of, uh, I've been seeing guitars out there. You know, I didn't realize I had the tuner on, so. But you get to hear the mic too. When I've been seeing guitars with built-in effects, and I've thought about this, can I just say right out, that's insane. Um, it's not a bad thing to get a guitar with effects built in, but here's what you do. It's like buying a car, or buying a computer, or updating or buying software. It's obsolete as soon as you buy it. And so, if you get all these built-in reverbs and built-in delays and all this stuff, what are you getting? You are buying an instrument that without that, what does it sound like? Not that awesome. And the software that's in there to create those sounds is obsolete because there's somebody right now working on a newer version. And so here's what I think about acoustic. I have nothing against those companies that do that, but it's an idea that, for, frankly, for me, I could never wrap my head around and I would never use, and I'll tell you why. Pick an acoustic that's amazing, okay? And look at the price point. There are no better acoustic guitars for the price point than Sawtooth. There are not. I don't care. I played them all. I've been to so many. I've been easily to 2,000 music stores around the world in my life. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I have seen every kind of brand you can possibly imagine. Knockoffs, every boutique camp, because that was my job. I went around the world doing workshops. And so I got to see store after store after store. And so I, under, I learned a lot about people who run them. I could actually kind of tell uh, who was going to, what stores were doing really good, what ones weren't, uh, if a clinic was going to be crowded or not. I could tell by just walking in because it was such, I've seen so many. And so here's what I would say in my humble opinion. One, get an acoustic guitar that's a great acoustic guitar. And if you want effects, make sure it has a great pe uh, preamp system like this top of the line Fishman. Then what do you do? You plug it into something that has delay and reverb. Wow, what a novel idea. What am I doing right now? I I don't, I'm not using the sawtooth amps. I'm plugging it into my DAW system. And what does that mean? It means no matter what year it is, I can have the most updated software I want. I can get any sound I want. I could buy a little amplifier and plug it into my acoustic and go to the beach, just like you can with all the onboard electronics. But the difference is I can have updated electronics every time there's an update. And so when you have when you're stuck with whatever proprietary software you've got or proprietary verbs and all this, that's it. And I think the, the best thing for me, it's kind of like, think about electric guitar. You wanna get the best guitar you can. And so you can plug it in. I can plug it into my Marshall that's over there. I can plug it into my Sawtooth that's here. I can plug it into my computer and have software. So I still, to this day, it's, there was a great meme that showed telephones in the 1950s, what a telephone looked like, 60s, 1970s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. And it showed all these different phones, and it showed guitar. Not a change. And that's the key. So, And I, I believe that with acoustic, that you want to get a great acoustic that feels good for you, that is 
able to be electrified. In other words, you can plug it in. And that's what my humble opinion is on this. Uh, let's see. But um, let's see, I love the shape of the grand concert shape, you're currently brandishing. Yes, this is called a mini jumbo. I'm telling you right now, this is the best acoustic shred guitar that I've ever played. And one of the reasons that I love it so much, it joins at the 15th fret, just like the regular jumbo, the 12 strings, now, um, and the dreadnought here, all 15th fret. They have a really cool guitar called the parlor. The parlor is elongated like this. It joins at the 12th fret. It's more of almost like a takeoff of a medieval instrument, like a lute or something. Uh, it sounds great too. But I can tell you this, that, uh, let's see, does Speed Kills have any advice for alternate picking tune-up patterns? Uh, I do a lot of exercises with that. The Speed Kills bundle addresses that two-note pattern. But I'll tell you one thing to work on your two-note patterns, to do the exercise that I always talk about, where you do fingers one, two, one, three, one, four, two, three, two, four, three, four. In other words, sometimes I start it going down. Sometimes I'll start low. So I do exercises on two notes per string all the time, every day. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. You know, three notes per string is actually hard. And you know, and I, and I hear people say, oh, well, when you break away from the three note patterns, um, it's hard to alternate pick because each new string is on an upstroke. Down, up, down, new string, up, down, up. But see, two notes per, pa per string is always the same. Whether you start on an up pick or a down pick, down, up, down, up down up or up down up down and certain things i found like for example a diminished arpeggio i talked about this on my starlix video that's available at metal method i like to start those on an up pick and i don't know why but it feels more comfortable the way it goes and you know this is a choice of the artist and you know when i taught speed kills and all my instructional programs I am not a judge or a jury. I'm not here to tell you what to like. I'm not here to tell you what guitar players are great. All I do is show you the technique. And that's why it's copied so much because these are universal things that were right when I studied them the first time. And, and I understood something that, that even to this day, exercises are not music. They can be musical, but they are not music. Uh, Joey from Manowar and I did this really fast thing. I mean, it was super fast. And, and people are judging it, you know, oh, it sounds like this, it sounds like this. We said in the title, it is a warm-up exercise. And you know, you get these, you know, negative internet pundits. Well, why don't you write some music? Well, how about this? <laughs> Fifteen thousand people, up to forty thousand or more, going warriors of the world. You've written something, or or how about fighting the world, or how about battle him? These amazing songs that Man of War has written, and that millions, tens of millions of albums have been sold. So again, you know, you know, I understand. You know, people wanna wanna say, oh yeah, well, where's the music? It's never been like this. Bach wrote two and three part inventions, symphonias, to, to show technique in a musical way. I wrote No Boundaries to show technique in a musical way, but that's not necessarily what you need to do. The Hannon School. <laughs> Now, what is that, the greatest sounding song? That's not comfortably numb. That's a pink fly. I don't hear any feeling. In it. Like, I just don't hear it. It doesn't move me. I just, 
don't get the feeling. I don't, I don't know. There's no feel. There's no soul. Uh, dude, it's an exercise. I don't care. There's no soul. Well, Mozart cared. Paganini cared. It is a separation of the techniques and the music. Not all the time. Bach did it. I did it with no boundaries. So I'm not equating myself to Bach, but I studied. When you can play the techniques really good, a musical person will incorporate that in their music. And so, uh, you know, and it's just so far beyond my thinking that somebody could criticize an exercise. I don't get it. You know, they might not say, they might say, well, look it, I have other exercises that do the same thing. Very valid point. But say, oh, that sucks. It's not musical. Learn how to write a song. That's typical. And I think to myself, and one of the things that I think when people write that, that's one person I never have to worry about. Because, and when I say worry about, you know, it's like there's a lot of competition in life. There's a lot of competition in music. There's a lot of competition in every job. But when you get a person that thinks like that, that doesn't see the picture or doesn't understand the focus of what, uh, what you are trying to do, I don't have to worry about that person. They just don't get it. And that's fine with me. You know, it, you know the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink the water. And that's exactly how I feel when people criticize exercises. This is not David Gilmour. Okay, I'm not writing comfortably numb for you. It's already written, but I can give you the techniques that will help you be a better player. And people that understand this and that can in employ these techniques, in they integrate it into their own music. And that's the key. You know, Joey from Manor, I'll bring him up again. He's just a brilliant guy. I mean, you know, he makes these you know, piccolo basses, people uh, say, well, the neck is thin. That's because there's only four strings on it. They are bass strings, but if there were six strings, it's a piccolo bass. It's a long neck. Uh, it's thin. He's He just does what he does, and he's super fast on bass, but he's a brilliant songwriter. He's a brilliant uh, orchestrator of, of, of music, of the show. If you go see the Man of War show, this is like going to see Kiss. I mean, this is a huge, huge endeavor and a huge undertaking and a huge production. And so, and, and we were like kindred spirits. I, I, I was looking at him. We understand the same things and, and many of the things. And uh, so, but, you know, it's whether I talk about a sawtooth guitar, whether I talk about speed kills, I have to believe in what I'm talking about. And I, I think, too, with, you know, whether it's, uh, doing an exercise or an acoustic, I have to ask myself, well, why am I playing this guitar? Like, what is the benefit for me? What is the benefit for you? The benefit is that these are fantastic instruments with high quality parts at a price you can afford. Now, if you want effects, my humble opinion is stick a cable in this great preamp system use an external amp or plug it in a software. But I have to say, I don't think I would ever get a guitar with built-in effects. It's obsolete because those effects, even if you get it updated, it's not like buying a new computer. You can have an amazing acoustic guitar for 15 years. You tell me if you think the iPhone or your DAW system is gonna be the same today as in 15 years. But the guitars can be the same, the software changes, the actual physical wood, the feel, the sound. That's what you're looking for. And then you can add all this other stuff later. So anyway, um, we have new songs coming out. I'm uh, with uh, Man in the Box, Nils, uh, the bass player, was, uh, uh, you know, he, he was online here. I, I can't say enough. I really, he's a great guy. He's a really good songwriter, too which is something that, that we learn because I love collaborating with people. I mean, Jim Gillette from Nitro, we wrote Freight Train. Like five minutes. And you hear that all the time. You know, you hear artists, you know, oh yeah, that song just came came up, you know, yesterday. You know, And again, I'm not equating myself with these other players, but you listen to Elton John or, or anybody else, Queen, um, you find that that a lot of these songs are written quickly. They're just kind of in the ethos, and you just kind of pluck them out. Or there's the river of music, and you tap it and swim in it a little bit, and then out comes the song. But when I can't write with somebody, 
can't write with them. You know, so I could have this riff. I had this riff. And I told, I, I've told this story. I called it Believe in Yourself. I'm like, Believe in Yourself. Believe in Yourself. And Jim looked at me. He's like, dude, that's stupid. All of a sudden, I'm like a freight train. I'm like a freight train. Come and tell me what to do. To tell me what to say. Try to tell me how to live. Came so fast or long way from home. So all of a sudden, I w I played that song for Jim. He had it, but I mean, he's like. All of us, he said, pencil He just started singing it, and then it went. And then it It was like it wrote itself. It was so crazy. It just happened so fast. You know, we just worked so well together. Uh, it was amazing. And, and uh, you know, yeah, granted, we would love to see the production of our first album. Uh, you know, done or remixed, but unfortunately, I actually had the master tapes, and I'm in my own house in the studio here, you know, below ground in the basement. You know, it's obviously finished, and there's like a big room back there, two rooms this way. It's pretty big, and, and uh, but the master tapes got damaged. They got, uh, and uh, I, I was on the road. I, I had a leak in one of the uh, uh, it's like this window well, and the tapes got ruined, so we can't remix it. But somebody remastered uh, the first album, and it sounds amazing. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, somebody wrote, I'm gonna, uh, can't wait to hear you playing with Vinnie Apice. Uh Yes, Vinnie Apice and I, and, and uh, we're going to be at the Viper Room on May 31st. It's going to be amazing. Somebody asked about Holland songs. Yeah, I wrote every song with the singer. Uh, got a run. It wrote itself pretty much. But anyway, I want to say this. Thanks to each and every one of you. Uh, Sawtooth Guitars Rule. The acoustics are on sale 40% off. Metal Method 25% off. I'm recording with Manowar. And uh, the Michelangelo Badio band has new songs coming out. Anyway, I want to say this. Thanks to each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I sincerely appreciate it, and I'm here to help. I'm Michelangelo Badio. See ya.